Rundown today is March 5th. Um, let's start with this spring break fight. White boy wasted Panama City Beach. We have frats versus locals is what somebody said this was. I'm not exactly sure what that meant. They both look like frat guys to me. Um, I liked the end of the video where the where like the head guy at SAE is just like, everybody who's in SAE, walk this way. Everyone in fucking SAE, go back that way. Um, what do you got on spring break fights? And while you're thinking of it, I wrote my blog, and I don't know if this makes me old or lame or whatever. The last place on earth I'd want to be is like at a spring break location. I don't want to be at Panama City, Cancun. I feel like all people do there is fight, like white guys fight. I've never fight, never thrown a punch in my life. It's the last place I'd want to be. Uh, KFC, what do you got? Yeah, it's a tradition unlike any other. We get, you know, we see these spring break fights every every year. And it doesn't make sense. It's like you're in... I mean, yeah, all these places are dumps, but it's like just the perfect place to get fucked up and get laid, and these idiots brawl every time. Your, your trip is ruined when you get your face mashed in. I don't think there was any locals in there, though. I mean, that th there was no, no local flavor there. That was all frat boy. Uh, as far as what I want to go on, yeah, I, I think I'm with you. I think that ship has sailed for me. Uh, I, I got no interest in being in the middle of those like cesspool spring break spots. Big cat. Well, it makes perfect sense. These are the guys that can't get laid. So if you can't get laid, you start to fight. That's like, those are your two options in spring break. Either you fuck a lot of strange pussy or you just start fist fighting every guy in sight. Uh, in terms of actually fighting on a beach, that's got to be the scariest place to fight because you don't have any walls. You don't have any surroundings. You literally have to be spinning the whole time ready for a sucker punch. And you saw that one guy, he got sucker punched from like nowhere. I need the other guy wasn't even in the fight and he came running in and just smashed him in the face. So yeah, I, I think if you get in a fight like that, you need to get your frat bros, go back to back and just like literally spin around the whole time <laughs> fighting people that way. There was one guy I commented, I, I don't know if you saw him, he was wearing like a flannel open and sunglasses. He threw a hundred straight missed punches. <laughs> like and I'm talking air, like this much in between every punch it was actually slightly amazing to see how somebody could miss that many punches um I know who's worse than the guys or the girls who get involved in these things oh they're worse they that's do. the only thing because there were chicks there presumably they're yeah, fucking you know, they weren't getting fucked though that's my point like if you're if they're not getting fucked then the guys are probably frustrated and gonna fight someone and they're probably blackout drunk it's you know noon and uh there's there was you know how many girls like five girls yeah. for 40 guys so yeah I still, I, I never, I, I, I don't ever, and I don't get it. I've never been a guy who, at any level, the more I drink, it's not like ready to fight. I just, you know, I get funnier and creepier. Um, <laughs> this story I blogged, so this chick from Boston Magazine, who's sneaky, like, kind of really hot to me, um, in a, like, librarian type way, basically used Tinder to get guys to shovel out her car successfully. She goes on to say the guy wasn't creepy at all and was just being chivalrous. I don't know what I think about that. What do you think in general? Like, if this girl gets assaulted, like, can she point the finger at anybody? I don't know that you can when you're doing this, big cat. Well, isn't that, that's Tinder in general, right? Because, like, that could happen. I guess that's the game you play. I, I read your blog. I totally agree. The fact that she, I, I don't begrudge her for doing this because it's sort of like yesterday the the chick going to vegas it's a little like that although she was just asking for free money this girl you know she's pretty upfront about it she's like i just need help shoveling but ted obviously thought he was at least getting a hand job at least for shoveling out the driveway so for her to sit here and be like oh he was just happy to like gab about her his ex-girlfriend I don't even know what planet is she living on. She does. She I like that's not real life. Insane. KFC. She's definitely got that hot appeal. She's like Jeopardy hot when you see yeah. a chick on Jeopardy. She's cute. Um, there's there are certain things that are implied. This is like an implied social contract. If I come over with a fucking ice pick and I dig your car out, you got to give me some. And if you don't, you're an asshole. And if you don't, and you try to spin it like you said, like she's that the guy was still happy. You're a double asshole. You got to give him something. Yeah, so we all agree there. And if you really think he wasn't after something, then... Yeah, then you're a fucking ignorant moron. Like, I could see Nate 
like going and shoveling somebody out and be like, oh, I didn't want anything. And then three weeks later, you're in his freezer. And it's like, oh, what happened? How'd we go? How'd we go from Nate not wanting anything to I'm um, now in a million pieces in his freezer? Because obviously he wants something, but he's not, you know, it's the dance. So for her sake, I hope he wanted something. It was like, this girl sucks. This girl's bullshit. Not he walked away being like, oh, I'm happy with like a really fake, like creepy smile on his face. Like, a scone. Walk- yeah. And a fucking scone. scone. Yo, if that what? chick gave me a scone and oh. didn't see anything else, I would throw it right in her Dude, fucking. What the fuck is a scone anyway? It's just a piece of bread that's like cooked a little bit extra. Get me a, get me a donut, a bagel. Get me something real. A scone. I literally don't even know what a scone is. It's just got a hard texture, right? Yeah, it's it's like a hard it's like a hard piece of bread with sugar on it. A good scone is good though. Have you ever had like a quality scone? It's like a breakfast I, item, right? I don't care. Yeah. The best scone in the world isn't better than the worst donut. I I obviously I agree with that, but I don't want to bash on scones too much. You get a no, no, we're bash no, we're bashing on scones. I'm team scone. Fuck you. I'm right down the middle. I don't really know enough about scones to make an educated decision. Um. <laughs> It's... You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to do your research on scones. You're like this is this is like talking about who you're gonna vote for president. Yeah. I, I haven't listened to the topics enough. I don't know enough about scones. My mother makes something called mundle bread, like a Jewish bread, which is very good. I don't know if that's like related to a scone. Um, kind of a slow day. DeAndre Jordan. I don't know. You guys. Hopefully you saw the clip because we're doing the rundown. We're going to talk about it. But he basically gets an offensive rebound in a tie game against Portland with point seven to one second left and just sits there with the ball and doesn't shoot it while while uh chris paul is screaming at him to shoot it i don't know what the hell this guy was doing big cat it's like game awareness is at an all-time low it, it's almost like when you were in you know elementary school and the one spaz on your basketball team would come in and shoot at the wrong hoop i, I don't know how you just don't even understand that you still have time to shoot here but chris paul yelling at him was <laughs> hilarious and even if you don't have time to shoot you still shoot yeah right everyone yeah. still shoots kfc the, the, like he the 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 shot clock shouldn't have gone off I, I think that's why he stopped but no matter what no matter what circumstances are you tip that ball back up there you don't just stand there with it but this is like the kind of guy deandre jordan is i feel like you're gonna get nights where he gives you like 25 rebounds and then you're gonna get nights where he fucks you over like this and it's you take the good with the bad the only thing I'll say is it kind of got my motor running for March Madness because you think there's no game awareness in the NBA. You take this down to college kids, there is at least like seven to ten games where the spread is decided by something that you've never seen before in the tournament. Like some kid doing something just bananas weird. So it got me like that's how a college game could end and you lose. Maybe not a game, but like a spread. So I'm excited. Um Lots of tweets about this last night, not just this. Bill Walton, and he's crazy every game, but he was like ultra crazy last night for UCLA versus Arizona State. And I almost feel like at some at some level, ESPN has just been like, we're going to take the, we're taking the handcuffs off him. Like we are, go- this is now going to be the Bill Walton and Dave Pash. Is that, is that who he's doing it with? Show. Uh, I made this vine. <laughs> They're talking about cows. And Bill Walton, uh, the exchange, which is basically like, how do you know about cows? And he says, oh, because I've seen cows get milked and I've been milked before. And then they didn't say anything for like 45 seconds. What do you you know about milking cows? Have milked a cow before. And I have been milked. KFC? Anybody else like in the whole world, I would say, has become self-aware and they're kind of doing it on purpose and playing it up. Not Bill Walton. Uh, I, I mean, it was straight out of Meet the Parents. Like, <laughs> I got nipples. Can you milk me, Fokker? And the fact that this is this is this is everything in a nutshell. The fact that we're just ignoring the fact they were just talking about milking cows. That's well, weird. You know yeah, what I mean? The, it was the, the the sentence led up to it is something. Walton said something to the effect, "You got to let this guy shoot the ball till the cows come home." Oh, okay. and, all right. And, so it, it, there was a reason. Okay. And then Pass is like, "How would you know about cows?" Got it. Got it. Yeah, I feel like that's just like your your a leading question to just go on go on it, Bill. Like, what's going to happen next? I love it. Big cat. I don't think he's self aware, like you said, Kevin. Uh, I will say though, if the ESPN thing is right, and I actually kind of agree with you, Dave, that's disappointing because Bill Walton getting to do whatever he wants is going to ruin Bill Walton. 
because he's going to do it too much. And it, it, it's he's like one of those crazy guys that it's great in doses. But if you just let Bill Walton be Bill Walton for two hours straight, it's gonna it's not you're not going to be able to listen to it anymore, and you're going to hate him because he will just go off for the entire time and never bring it back to earth. You'll, it'll take away the specialness of it. Right. Like you won't right. be able to pick a vine. You'll have to film a two hour fucking broadcast. Right. Well, he like basically got kicked off doing NBA games because they couldn't control him. So, so yeah. it, we've gotten him in doses. They're moving him earlier and earlier too. And all of a sudden, I mean, last night he was all over. I will say he knows so much about basketball. Like he at one point in the broadcast, Dave Pash said somebody who was a good shooter, like a, one of the all time great shooters, and it was just like kind of a, a journeyman from Arizona State. And Walton for ten minutes straight read off great NBA shooters, like one after another. Guys I'd never heard of by the end, be like, well, where does he fit with that? And Pash was just like, uh, I wasn't really being literal, I guess. Well, remember, too, he's about to do the Pac-12 uh, championship and the whole tournament, and that's in Vegas. Yeah. And he loses his mind there. So it's going to be – and he does some of the earlier games. It's Yeah, it gets it gets messy. This is going to be a messy end of the year for Bill Wall. Not much to say on this. This went viral with us, I think. Um, this charge call – It, it literally, I mean, we exaggerate all the time. This this was just about the worst call I've ever seen, ever. Big Cat? I don't know if people are... Um, I feel like we have this discussion every now and then, like the NBA versus NCAA conversation, and everyone always says they love March Madness and it's the best tournament ever, which I agree with. But college basketball, like on a whole this season, has been borderline unwatchable. The refs are awful. The players aren't very good. The shot clock's too long. It's actually, like, it's it's hard to watch. I, I know that everyone will love the, the tournament and it will leave a good taste in everyone's mouth. But if you've been watching college basketball this year, that was, like, par for the course. It's been really, really bad. KFC? That ref should just be fired flat out. Like, you can't, that guy should lose his job instantly. And it's like, you know, refs love offensive fouls. They love, love to act it up. And that guy, he was just looking for any 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 edge to, 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 to you know, act it out. And he took it. it. That's ridiculous, though. Literally, it's their favorite thing to do is and call an I, offense. If I was a ref, I would love it, too. I would I would do that, but only when it's a legit call. I would act it up, like, 100%, but you got to you gotta have something to act, you know, some basis for it. And that's all we got. It's kind of a slow day, March 5th. Uh, we'll be back next week with the rundown. Um, that's it. Is there? Do we have anything to talk about? Well, I mean, show, you guys, there, uh... we had the dispute. You asked me to take the shirt off. I, I had the people that think I'm laying it on like I want to make a big scene. Uh, I I didn't. You guys can back me up. I had my shirt on. All right. I, well, okay. So, but let's talk about for, for what we talked about before the show. The fact that you posted that blog and thought that the world knew that Justin Bieber was on men health, Men's Health cover. You thought that was common knowledge. You thought that that was like something everyone in the world is talking about. That it is the barstool sports. Like you go sit at a bar and everyone's like, hey, did you see Bieber on the cover of Men's Health? I had no idea what that blog was about when you first posted it without the Bieber cover. Yeah, no, I I it's probably because the magazine is not out. We're early to it. But when Bieber's on the cover of the magazine I, uh, of Men's Health, I feel like people take notice. I had a lot of people tweeting at me. It was front page of Daily Mail. It is. It, it is the front page Daily Mail. That's not like, do you think it is? I'm telling you it is. This is, this, listen, this is one of those times, look, you were right with, with the Deflategate stuff. The whole world ended up talking about that. This one, we are the only ones talking about it. That he's on the cover? Th like, really talking about it and being like... Well, I, I'm sure line. there's not people going around getting like the tattoos, but... You know, that's kind of... So So this is, you're saying, way below the Mike Calvin's thing. Mike Calvin's I saw everywhere. Yeah, so you're saying... Right. So you're saying that uh, Mike Calvin's was everywhere. It, it's also like men, men's health. We're not talking right. about like, I don't know, like a GQ or like right. he somehow ever made it on like sports... I don't know. Something that people actually care about. It's men's health, dude. Nobody cares. Only losers buy men's health. That's like the dumbest I don't buy thing men's health. I've ever heard. I don't buy men's health. Yeah, I know. That's my exactly. Point. No one buys men's health. But I didn't buy. I didn't buy Calvin Klein underwear either. But that was something that was everywhere for the chick and for. I mean, it was like SNL spoofed it. 
That was the whole thing. Yeah, no, I know. I, we, I, but I did that before SNL. I think we're just early to this. My health, my what's the name of that magazine? Men's Health. I, I think this will be everywhere. I think you are so wrapped up in Bieber that you think everything he does is a story when it's not, and then you're like, "Well, it's a story because we're talking about it," but it's not. It's like a, you're you're a dog chasing its own tail with Bieber at this okay, point. Okay, well, we'll see. No, I admit it's not everywhere right now. I all admit right, so that. I have a follow up question. <laughs> I mean, we all have these moments. I had it last week when I was chasing llamas in Phoenix. Did you have the moment today where you're like, I'm a 37-year-old man doing fake tattoos to mimic a 21-year-old boy? No, I was like, you know what? This is what you do. You go to the mattresses. Like, I, I, I knew this was a bit that I was trying to get a laugh. The only time I question myself is, like, I had to stay like this for a long time. And my shoulders were killing me. How like I don't, I don't have good shoulders. Did you have a moment where you thought to yourself, "Wow, I could have just had Millmore Photoshop this, and I didn't have to pay hundreds of dollars and stand there getting my actual body painted?" Nope. I don't. I don't <laughs> Do know. Do you regret that now? Because I think everyone that, thought it was a Photoshop. Yeah. That kind of ruins it. I don't think we could have photoshopped it like that. And now they're gonna know it's not a Photoshop. All right. Uh, so- what do you want? I, I, I don't like getting Dave's back, but this is, I don't know, you guys must live in like an anti beaver world because it's everywhere. Thank you. I mean, it is. He is like headline news, whatever he fucking does. I haven't seen it once. I mean, I just Googled it and it's on the first. Oh, you Google Googled it? it? Oh, you Googled Justin Bieber Men's Health? I'd hope there would be a few hits. Well, how about Time Magazine, uh, New York Magazine, Daily Mail, Gawker? It's, I mean, it's every website has it. So I don't know what you mean by it's not anywhere. It's just not that like this isn't a huge story. He's just yeah, on the cover. I, I don't think it's worth talking about. But I everybody's think, talking about it. I didn't think it was big enough to throw it up there without the reference of Bieber's cover. It's so early to this too. You get that? Like just can't, never, but it's ever. Like, he just. I mean, I, you guys are just. It, it's like you're. He just gave you facts. I've facts. Never, I've never ever once even heard anybody discuss. Someone being on the cover of Men's Health, like that's a big deal. It, it it's but Bieber's yeah. a big deal. What? Also, people tweeting what Bieber does, does is a big deal. People tweeting at you with the Bieber stuff does not mean that it's a big deal. That I, I would like all the places. It is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not the Twitter. It's it's Time Magazine. What is Time? I, has anyone does anyone read Time Magazine? <laughs> oh, man, time. What the what the fuck's Time? What? What's, 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 what's I don't New York know Magazine? What what's, what's Daily Mail? What's New York Daily News? What are those things? I mean, I've said to him six times it's on the front page of Daily Mail, and he just says no. I yeah, haven't seen you know how many times? I, I just don't. There are, there are plenty of times the Daily Mail has something on their front page that we just don't blog. We don't yeah, so, but we blog some stuff. I'm making a goddamn joke here, and we're fucking, you guys are like, oh, it's, it's a non story. I have to pick and choose things to blog about. I said, you know what? Let's get a fucking henna artist in here and tattoo my ass for three hours to get a joke. And as joke men, funny. you should that fucking, re- you should, re- you should respect so that. Funny. I'm not saying it's not funny. It's very funny. You look goddamn ridiculous right now. <laughs> My whole point started from the fact that I didn't get the joke because I hadn't seen the cover. And you just posted your cover, and I was confused as fuck. The worst. You part didn't of know all. these were Bieber tattoos. No, I don't know Bieber's no- tattoos. What? Are you serious? You think I could close my eyes and tell you what a Bieber tattoo is? No, but when you see an exact replica, you'd be like, oh, Prez is being Bieber. No! I don't even know what you guys do in that office, in your in your little home offices. The worst part of all is how low your sweatpants are right now. That's I'm because expecting... that's that's how Bieber wore them in the fucking shoot. Uh, yeah, I get it, but you and your your body type is a little different from Bieber's, and I'm expecting much... like some tubes pop out in a second. How much did you pay this woman? Disgusting. How about how about me though having a little decency and not sitting down for the after show because I know that's going to be a horrific scene to just be <laughs> sitting in my chair with my Bieber tattoos and my gut doing sit. stuff on, it shouldn't sit. be doing. Please sit. Please sit. Sit for a second. How much did this? How much did this? <laughs> it's not so bad. Turn, give us a side profile. That's where it gets up. You're yoked up, bro. You're so yoked, like Bieber. Hey, how much did uh? How much did it cost? I gave it three hundred. 
that's that's a deal. Like she she won't she'll be scarred for life. She didn't you know what she was. Like this the whole time. I, sitting like this on on I sat like this on a Gatorade bottle, like upside down. Ugh. So whatever I may keep Why it. Don't you get them permanently, dude. If you really, I'm I mean, not going to keep gonna it live permanently. The beaver life. Listen, I'm not. But it, it. Let me tell you this. It's got me one clo step closer to tattoo life. Not these tattoos. Although we do have like right there, Hank. Woo! I thought you were getting a real ah. tattoo. Because it would really fit in nicely with your whole midlife crisis vibe you got going on. <laughs> midlife crisis, bro? <laughs> what are you talking about? You have to fuck up. Shut it up. Midlife crisis, my ass. It's a joke. Midlife <laughs> <laughs> thing's a joke.